Welcome to the Float Podcast, an entrepreneurial journey. My name, my name is Nick Janicki, once a wide-eyed hippie with purple dreadlocks, and now the founder of the True Rest Float Spa, the fastest growing floating franchisor in the world, and CEO of Float Pod Technologies, the industry leader in float pods. Follow me along in my entrepreneurial journey with what will become the next billion dollar industry to enter the health and wellness sector. Let's connect with world-class athletes, actors, musicians, doctors, industry experts, and explore the mindsets of powerful entrepreneurs. Let's get this floating party started. Hey guys, here we are with Jason Phillips with Dynamic Nutrition, who's also a uh, basically a nutritionist for um, elite athletes as well. Yeah. And you know, give us a little background about yourself. How did you get involved in floating, and you know, how's it how's it helping helping you? Yeah. So, being now that I work with a lot of elite athletes, and I work with anybody really around the world that, that wants my help and is ready to work with me, um, people will probably be interested to know my background is actually that I started with an eating disorder. Um, right, so when I was uh, 18, 19 years old, I uh, was a svelte 118 pounds um, and was a little guy, yeah. you know. So uh, obviously, it was nutritional protocols and proper nutrition and training that got me out of that and um, really saved me at the time. I mean, it was a rougher time in my life. And uh, so I went to school for it, obviously, became very educated in it. And today, I, I sit with a position where I'm able to give back. Um, so with the consulting piece and obviously owning a supplement company that specializes in something that floating helps. Sure. Um, you know, it's uh, it's been pretty cool. Right. So, um, and then in terms of floating, you know, I, I heard about it and, and I, the, one of the first people I ever heard about it from was Joe Rogan. Um, oh, okay. and he used to reference it all the time on the podcast yeah. and I was always very intrigued. I was like, man, that's gotta be really cool. And, and I gotta admit, you know, one of the things that scared me was I'm very ADD. Anybody that knows me is like, you wake up at five in the morning, you don't stop until you go to bed at like 12. And you know, I'm sure I'm talking really quick and it's just kind of my personality. And so they're like, there's no way it will work for you. And and so um, I met somebody here locally in Arizona um, that said, hey, you should really try it out. Here's a place you can go. I'd always been looking for places. Um, Found it, went and did it, and it was was life altering, literally, like it was that extreme. Um, so what ha- what was the experience during the float like? I mean, so so I was really scared that it was going to go in and just like my mind was going to go crazy. Uh, I wasn't going to be able to calm down. I got out and like everything was clear. Um, I, I the first time it wasn't like a physical thing for me, but I wasn't okay. going in with any physical ailments or, or anything like that. Um, I was actually taking some time away from training myself. Um, it was actually a, a big crossroads for me. It was right before I started really taking my company to another level. And I feel like stepping out of there was one of the times I can pinpoint where my business was really ready to go to another level. Okay. So so from that piece, it was really cool, right? I had this clarity. Um, physically, since since I've been doing it a couple times, right? I get out, um, I battle inflammation a ton. Being mm-hmm. a power lifter that's chasing a world record, um, I'm bound to have some inflammation in my body. Um, but now I'm coming in, um, knowing what I know about the science behind it and, and literally being able to piece it all together, it's, it's pretty awesome. Wow, that's so. great. I mean, how, you know, so you've done it a couple times now. Now, yeah. how would you say you would integrate it into a regime? So what's the record you're going for, just out of curiosity? So I am going to compete in uh, powerlifting in, at the 198 class. Okay. Um, I want to break the, the world record of the total, which would be squat, bench, and dead. So I don't think I'll break any lift individually, okay. um, but I think that I'm very well balanced across the board. Uh, it's kind of a newer endeavor to me. I've never done it exclusively. I was a CrossFitter, um, and so I just happened to be a stronger CrossFitter and figured, okay, why not? You know, do something I'm good at. Um, so, that's you know, for me, that's a hobby, and it's you know, while I'm chasing something that's pretty elite in terms of a world record, it's not my be all end all. Um, I own two businesses. Right. That's that's my life, um, and for me to function at a high level. I have to make sure that my adrenals are in check. I have to make sure that I'm recovering from my training. Um, Because if I'm not recovering from it, why do it? Um, It's supposed to positively enhance what I do in life. Sure. Um, You know, so for me, it's it's a recovery modality is really what it is. Um, But it's a recovery modality that does things far beyond physical recovery. It gets into, like, my central nervous system, which... I'm a huge fan of in making sure that it's functioning properly. Right. Um, if I'm not thinking on a high level, other companies are going to beat me, and I don't like that. Right. Sure. So, yeah. No, I understand that entirely. So I mean, so you have two companies. Uh, now, 
you know, how, so I mean, one of the biggest benefits I've found for floating is, is just like what you said, is the psychological clarity. Absolutely. And so if I'm having anything go on in my life and I get in the tank or the pod or the room, whatever design you have, I get yeah. out and I just kind of take a deep breath and I go, oh my gosh, I yeah. do this every day. Yeah. Why am you I not know, doing this more? Ironically, I was, the last time I did it was like three, four weeks ago. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was a really busy time. There was a, a couple of new things we were getting ready to launch and there was a lot of questions around it in my head. And. I went in, it was like 60, 75 minutes, I came out, and I just, I remember, like, you know, don't shoot me for texting while driving, but I did, like, real quickly as I was pulling out of the parking lot, right. and I was like, I remember just texting my business partner and being like, I have it, right, I ha 100%, I have it. I, have, I got I have, home, I, I had what? the solutions to all, oh. the, all the problems we were having, Wow. and I got home, and I probably had 10 implementation points that day, Right. and I, I remember him, and then the girl, a girl that works for us, was like, where did all this come from, right? They were kind of like, holy shit, like, how did that happen? It's like so, inspiration. Yeah, and, uh, and and they were like, <laughs> they were like, how did that happen, you right. know? And, and literally, it was getting in a float pod for a little over an hour. You know, you're hitting something, and I'm, I'm glad you brought this up, because not everyone necessarily gets that after the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth float, right. whereas I call it the magic float. Sure. So to me, the magic float is going past the uh, physiological benefits where I'm going in for back pain, yep. and I'm getting back pain relief, but I'm coming out with you know clarity, yep. inspiration, creative. your yeah. creative juices are flowing, Sure. and that's the key. And as an athlete, as an elite athlete, I mean, those things... I think we forget about so we're so focused on the training aspect yeah. that we forget the psychological and creative necessity as a human being past just the training yeah it's it's funny you mention that i mean a lot of the athletes i work with they come to me for physical things right i'm sore after i'm training i'm sore after i'm done training and i'm not physically able to do this and that and, and when we really get into it we see that it, the lack of recovery is twofold it's it is lack of physical recovery but that lack of physical recovery has now festered into a lack of central nervous system recovery. And I can tell you in the research I've done and the number of athletes I've worked with in the last couple of years, if your central nervous system's not recovering and your adrenal glands are essentially becoming fried because of it, um, you have no hope, right? And, and there's a, a, CrossFit's the best example. I work with a right. lot of high level CrossFitters and the central nervous system demands of that sport are so high. Right. Um, you know, the, the really elite, resilient athletes can come away and they've got a really high pain tolerance. I don't care what your pain tolerance is. Your adrenal glands don't have pain tolerance, right? When they're smashed, they're smashed. And right. when your cortisol is not working properly, you can't, it's not like insulin. You can't just go and have some sugar and, right. and replenish your insulin levels, right? There's no magical cortisol that you can take. You have to go through the physiological process and allow your cortisol to regenerate properly and you know allow your cortisol curve to come back to normal. Um, this is a modality that I found that actually gets you there. And right. you know when, when people hear me talk about it, it's a lot of sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. Um, when they get into training, that sympathetic fight or flight, we like that, right? We, I want them there. But when they get out, I want them in that rest and recover mode. And that's that parasympathetic state. A lot of them aren't getting there because they're not allowing the recovery. They're going directly into their jobs where they're now re-stimulated. They're going back home into the life stress. Sure. Um, they're not taking an hour, right, laying down and allowing themselves to calm down. And, and I, if more people did it, a lot more people would be happy. Right. So, I mean, what would you say to someone that is an athlete or, um, you know, let's say they do CrossFit or they do MMA right sure. now what would your recommendation be for them integrating something like floating into their training routine? Yeah, so you see, you're seeing a lot of, a lot of multiple sessions daily, right? I mean, I, I think that you could go one of two ways. If you could float between sessions, I think mm -hmm. it'd be awesome. Then you'd come back in the afternoon, really refreshed, really ready to go hard. Right. Um, or the guys that are only doing one a day, it'd be a great post-workout protocol. Um, one of the things I'm big on with my athletes, obviously, is carbohydrates in the post-workout window. I don't do that why like most people like most nutritionists would prescribe it in the sense that it's a glycogen replenishment it's for me it's a central nervous system kind of stop right that that's the cns has been just jazzed up it's kind of been crushed for an hour or two hours however long your training session is um what i want is that the attenuation of that response and i i want to start getting you back in that mm -hmm. parasympathetic state um if we can do that with food then put you in a flow pod and, and just further it, imagine where you're going to be tomorrow. Sure. Right? Training is a long-term piece. The top athletes I work with are trying to go to the CrossFit Games every year. Right. It's once a year. So they have 365 days to sustain this training response. If they're not recovering from one week, two weeks, one month, three months of training, 
they got no chance next year. Right, right. Um, so this has to be implemented, yeah, period. Totally. Um, so I'm curious. So, you, you know, you, you uh, started out talking about when you were 18, uh, you know, going through some trials and tribulations. Sure. You are where you are now. Um, now, I'd be curious what kind of motivated you to start the Dynamic Nutrition Company, and then what is the product you're offering that differentiates it? Sure. Um, you know, Dynamic Nutrition started. It's pretty funny. I mean, I think that I, I started gaining popularity online for my own transformation, right? I had gone from skinny 118 pounds to, you know, I was I did some fitness modeling. I'm 31, so 12 years. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and around the time I was 23-ish, I think, that's when I started gaining some notoriety. Um, and I, I got published by Men's Health, Men's Fitness, Muscle and Fitness, um, several other publications and so the pictorial as well as the writing um, and so a lot of people were reaching out to me and they're like wow like you've really overcome a lot like how can I lose fat how can I gain muscle and sure it kind of started by accident right I started giving people advice and hmm. finally I was like man this is taking more time than my actual job I should charge for this <laughs> and uh, so I, yeah, I said to someone just give me a hundred bucks and they're mm -hmm. like oh, hundred dollars no problem my you know and before I knew it I had like 60 people beating down my door um, so, you know, today I actually operate off a waiting list of clients. Um, wow. I'm you have very, clients I, everywhere, right? I do. I have clients all over the world. Um, I've, I'm in Cambodia, Abu Dhabi, Australia, Tasmania, um, China, Hong Kong, you name it. I've is got this them all. basically from social media? This is, you know, I would say this is all, fortunately, word of mouth. Really? Um, okay. Yeah, I don't. A lot of people out there that are entrepreneurs will mm -hmm. want to know how did you get so many clients. I, sure. I got asked that question last night, and the truth is, it's quality service. Mm -hmm. um, I've always gone out of my way to differentiate myself in terms of business on quality of service. Um, when you get my time, you get all of me, right? And, and Brendan Burchard said a long time ago, just be present, right? That's mm -hmm. one thing I took mm -hmm. away from a lot of his speakings and writings is just to be present when you have a conversation sure. and. I, I really try to do that with everybody I encounter, and um, so things have grown well for me. Uh, the supplement side kind of came out of necessity, right? So I was training to go to CrossFit Regionals two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing the extremely, the extremely high training volume that CrossFitters do, um, two a day, seven day a week, right? Just smashed, all beat up all the time, and, and I found myself in adrenal fatigue, right? Um, despite my nutrition being really good. Uh, so we started doing these protocols. I actually hooked up with my now business partner. Uh, we did some lab testing and we, we noticed I sure I definitely was in adrenal fatigue. Um, so we put together this blend and we're like, this will really help it. It's not the, the cure, mm -hmm. um, but it's certainly going to help sustain my training year round. Um, it worked a lot better than we ever could have imagined. And uh, all of a sudden people wanted some. And so we, you know, we did a small batch. I think we had 500 made and the people beat our doors down for it and so it, it kind of found itself right um, you know fortunately through that now it's a it's a product that's been picked up by several stores um, we're primarily online but uh, what's the website dyna uh, so the product is called max adrenal uh, maxadrenal.com okay. is where it can be found sure um, our website now my business partners Canadian so it's dynamic nutrition oh, really? um, yeah so we are uh, we are in the process of relaunching that which is which is gonna be cool um, and fortunately, we've actually started sponsoring athletes. So what we've noticed is there's a lot of broken athletes in the world. And I use the word broken, meaning adrenal fatigued or under recovered or people that need floating, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we've actually gone out of our way to sponsor them, to give them not only the nutrition advice they need and the supplements they need, but you know we work with them on growing their careers, mm -hmm. growing as an athlete and, and not going to those places where I've been sure. that, that probably ended my athletic career. Okay. Uh, so it's pretty cool. So, I mean, what would you say, um, you know, you said you're 31 now? 31. So you've been doing this for about 12 years, semi-professionally, I would say, sure. if not professionally. Sure. And so what would your takeaway be to people that want to get into this industry, to get into, let's say, CrossFit in yep. particular, or, you know, they want to be in MMA, what are some of the things you can offer them as wisdom? To be an athlete, uh, To be an athlete, but from a mindset perspective. Not necessarily the, the, the training routine. So, so I think mindset. that I think a lot of people get into and it's anything in life, mm -hmm. right? And I don't think it's CrossFit or MMA in general, but we'll use those. A lot of people get in wanting to be at the top tomorrow. Right. Um, you can't do, I don't care if you do 10 CrossFit workouts in a day, you're not going to be better tomorrow. You're just going to be more beat down. It takes time to acquire skills. Right. It takes time to acquire strength. It takes time to acquire capacity. 
and and that goes for fighting as well right it takes time to learn how to strike properly your jujitsu like you don't become a black belt over one night right right even if you train 24 hours a day you don't get to your black belt any quicker um understand that everything is a process and be ready for that time investment and be ready to do everything that comes with it right um and, and that includes recovery yep. right it's not about the we spend one hour in the gym we spend 23 hours recovering maximize those 23 hours because they're far more important um and i any of my clients out there will tell you i beat that into them nonstop. um i would say we talk more about recovery than we do about actual food sure so now how about how do you balance other things in your life i'm curious just to go a little deeper so i mean (laughs) you know sitting here i'd love to know jason you know how do you balance the other things because there's so much more whenever i talk to someone who works out they're in the gym sometimes an hour, sometimes two, yep. but their training regime is 15 hours a week. Sure. So how are you balancing all the other parts of your Yeah, so when I was training for high-level athletics, it was uh, it, it was a large part of my life. Mm-hmm. It was twice a day. My, my days revolved around being able to go to the gym when I wanted to. Now, that was the pursuit of being Which is actually a, a quote-unquote nice. professional athlete. Right. Um, Got it. I was fortunate enough at the time. I was working from home. I had, you know, I was secure enough in my finances. I could do it. Um, I wouldn't recommend that to very many people. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, now it takes training takes a backseat to what I want more, right? I mean, if I'm being candid, I want the growth of my business. Mm-hmm. I want to create more opportunities for people that work for me. Um, I want to help more people. Uh, I remember Craig Ballantyne a long time ago said, you know, have a mission. And so I set this mission of I personally want to touch 100,000 people, mm-hmm. um, be it via seminars, be it via certifications, be it via direct work. Yep. Um, at this point, I've worked with over a thousand individuals one on one, so I'm, I'm one one hundredth of the way there right. on that consult, you're right, on that piece. But um, I have that higher purpose that I'm always chasing. Um, in terms of balance, you know, I've just had to learn from from business advisors. I, I hired an assistant. Um, mm-hmm. I did things that I never really thought I would do, and I'm a control freak, self admitted. So. When I outsourced to my uh, assistant, it was scary. Right. Saying, here's my schedule. You can schedule my clients for me. Um, you know, here's my email. You can answer some of these emails. That was hard. So you have to trust. Um, but you yeah, it was, it was bit. trust and, and outsourcing that were, were right. huge for me. Right. Um, you know, since then, it's, uh, and, and I think that you can probably corroborate, mm-hmm. finding balance immediately is really hard. Right. Um, when you first t- undertake any big entrepreneurial endeavor, you, you have to sprint. You have to, yeah. right? And and so and the people in your life have to be willing to let you. Yes. Um, I'm very blessed to have an amazing girlfriend and amazing family. Mm-hmm. Um, they've been supportive the whole time. Without that, I don't think it's possible. Um, you know, it's it's funny. I listen to guys like uh, you know Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, and even um, what's his name, the Mark Cuban. Yeah. Right. They're talking about. You know, when they were first starting, if if the women in their life or the friends in their life didn't understand, it was like, hey, hit the bricks because this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, luckily, I've never had to do that, but I now sit where I sit, understand it. Yeah. Um, you know, and so balance for me it comes in just finding time to do what I want to do every day, and that's as small as I schedule time to read every morning. Um, I schedule time to write, you know, every day on Facebook, and so. Actually, I, I would encourage anyone that sees this to add me on Facebook. I do make like a daily kind of a motivational okay. post. Now, what's um, your Facebook? It's just my name, Jason Phillips. Okay. Um, I think my fan page might be facebook.com slash trainer Jason. Okay. Um, you can tell I've had that one for a long time because right. that'd we'll be a hard it. one we'll to get. We'll put it on as a resource. Okay, that'd, that'd be, be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, add me as a friend. Follow me. Um, ask me questions. I'm super approachable. Um, so... But I, you know, I make, I make time to do that every day because not only by writing that I know it's inspiring people, but it inspires myself. It right. keeps me moving towards my direction and reminds me of my vision. Right. Um, and you know, so by doing that, and then, just, you know, same things everyone else likes to do. You know, I, I have my date night every week. Mm-hmm. I have, uh, you know, I go to dinners and and there's there's things I want so badly though, and it's much bigger than what, you know, I have a why that's that's very large. Right. right? I mean, there's there's things that I really really want in life that. I don't care what it takes, I'm going to get there. Sure. Um, they're not monetary. They're not physical in nature. Um, but because I've been where I've been, I don't ever want people there. Um, and so my purpose is pretty big. Right. And I think that's the drive of most entrepreneurs. It's very rarely about the, the money or the Absolutely. goal. Or the you know the false summit. As uh, Dr. Jeff Spencer, he has a program talking about 
the summit is always a false summit. Sure. Because you get to where you thought the top was, yeah. and you kind of go, oh, I've ruined everything else, <laughs> and now where do I go? I still yeah. got to climb down the mountain. Yeah. You know, and I love that analogy because it's so it's true. Good. We think of the summit as the end. You still got to come back down. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we all, you know, I think that the summit's always a lot higher than we think it is. Right. You know, I think if you would have told me. And it's going to take more of you to get there. Sure. If, if you would have told me coming out of anorexia that I could ever weigh more than 140 pounds, right, I would have laughed at you. Right. Um, I hit 140 pretty quickly. Yeah, you know, I sit here today at 195 pounds. Um, you know, so I've, I've come 70, was it 76 pounds, 77 pounds since I started. Wow. Um, you know, that's a small human being. <laughs> it's a teenager, right? I mean, um, that's what I've put on my body right. since that. I never would have guessed that. Um, but this, it's a lot of things that a lot of people have to remember. You know, I took it day by day. I took it step by step. I didn't set out to achieve this massive thing. I said, this is what I can do today, and this is how I can maximize today. Um, you know, I, I Going genuinely... Going from your worst point at yeah. that, when you had anorexia, to where you are now, what was the biggest change? The one thing that you remember was the, the turning point for you? My mindset. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Mindset. Um, yeah, absolutely. 100%. I think that... If you've been around me and anyone that knows me, they probably think I'm a little crazy. Um, but I think you have to be to be really successful, right? Yeah, we all have like true. we all have like a little bit of that yeah, to us. Sure. Um, but I, I truly believe anything's possible, mm -hmm. right? I, I remember I didn't pick up my first golf club until I was 14. Um, the the guys that make it on the PGA Tour are, are much older than 14, or much younger than 14 when they start. Sure. I picked a club up at 14, shot over a hundred. Mm -hmm. I sucked. But I watched the guys in the PGA Tour, and I'm like, I can be there, right? I right. made it. I made it to professional status in my early twenties. Really? Yeah. Wow. I actually played on the mini tours. Wow. Um, I'm not gonna say I was very good because, right. you know, relative to the average individual, I'm probably pretty good at golf. Um, relative to those guys, I got my butt kicked. Mm -hmm. um, but regardless, the point is, I looked at something that's really most people would look at as, in, you know, not achievable, and I said I can do that. Um, you know, I look at a business and in an in industry that's relatively competitive, and I said I can own that industry. Right. Uh, and I'm well on my way there, and, yeah. I, and I'll get there. Um, you know, and it's the supplement industry is super competitive, as I'm continuing to find out. Um, but we will have a presence there, and we'll have one that's positively impacting people. So I think that it's uh, it's self belief and it's it's mindset. I just think a lot of people really give into this thing that something's not possible, and, right. and I don't I don't fathom that, um, but Fortunately, that's what's allowed me to get to where I am. Sure, so. absolutely. Well, that's awesome. I mean, if you could leave us with uh, one more uh, piece of wisdom or sure. a piece of advice to someone looking into becoming an athlete, looking to get into floating or whatever it might be, what would that what would that be? And I think you you hit it on the head. Is take a little bit of time for yourself and and prioritize things that you know are going to make you better. Um, you know, I think that I, I know that writing and reading are two things that I have to do. Whether mm -hmm. I'm making a lot of money and successful or whether I'm poor and struggling, I need to do those two things to be a better person and to continue to move forward in my life. Um, and I'll always make time for them. Right. You know, make time for the things that matter. Um, make time for the things that you know are going to move you forward. Right. And, uh, you know, inevitably it's going to happen. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And uh, as usual, our sponsors are uh, floatpod.com and True Rest Franchising. And awesome. we're going to put all Jason's websites and information on our website. If you're uh, listening to the audio, always check out the video and vice versa. And thank you so much. Cool, man. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks, dude. Mm -hmm. yeah.